all in all i think she's really coming along the restoration has been uh, quite a process but starting to get there i think it's getting there too long since we have driven the ram Woo! gotta love that and it looks like she needs a little bit of a cleanup but not all that terrible Ugh. still a little sore still a little sore but it's all right Little by little, get back up to normal. So, open up the panoramic. It is really nice that it does have this cover. You gotta hit the button twice to make it open all the way. If you don't want the fishbowl effect, you can always cover that up with the cover. But we are off. And it has been way too long since we've been out in the Rebel. Surgery was definitely a little bit more, I guess, uncomfortable than I expected, but after a few days, kind of got better. So back in the saddle again, you can actually go over bumps without any pain or anything like that. So hopefully, hopefully after my next doctor's appointment, I will be all ready to go back into the swing of things other than just being limited on what I can lift. So we do have some new things for the truck, which I should be able to handle without having to lift anything, so that is always good news. Our American flight for the back window is gonna get changed up because I did get the one with the 50 stars. It's all in, ready to go. Just gonna take that one off, put that one on. Big thanks to the guy in the comments that set me up with the link for that. It was on eBay and I did look for it myself, but I wasn't able to find it, but with the link, it was no issue whatsoever. So now we are in good shape. Get that installed and get it all correct because yeah, can't have an American flight without 50 stars. It just it's on American. Other than that, we do have some goodies for this truck. Some of it is actually sitting in the back here. And I'm just gonna have to wait and see, make sure my appointment goes good, that you know they can give me kind of a weight limit. Because I definitely do not want to mess up what they did because like some of you guys have said who have had the same procedure, you feel good until it's too late and you mess it up and then they gotta do it again. And I definitely don't want to do it again. So I'm kind of treading lightly here and giving it lots of time to get healed up before we go back into full full send mode in the shop and be able to actually you know, lift heavy things again so all of that being said we do have some extras to go on the truck and it's gonna be very exciting to kind of get that all sorted out and be able to kind of show you guys what is possible with these trucks for accessories kind of go into that next level but right now I'm actually on my way to the pew pew shop you guys know what I mean I don't know how the robots will catch anything as far as demonetization because they don't like pew pews but anyways we have critters in the yard and we might need one of those to remedy some of our issues that we've been having so yeah that's what we're gonna be doing it's gonna be good times uh, if you guys had noticed I mean obviously I am kind of a country type person you know the beard the camo all that kind of good stuff so those types of things are definitely one of my interests as well I just don't generally share too much of that on the channel. I mean, I have in the past, but YouTube's kind of tightened up in the last little while with monetization and advertisers not wanting any kind of pew pew content. So that is the nature of the beast that we are dealing with. So it is what it is until it's something else, I don't know. But we're gonna be sticking more or less with the car truck content and I've got a few ideas that are gonna be coming up and it might involve some heavy equipment and some really good times in the future and I'm very excited about that because 
I'm gonna be taking over basically getting everything in my yard figured out as far as landscaping goes and we will be getting a new machine for the yard care and maintenance so definitely stay tuned for that if you guys are interested in any kind of I guess you know if you do your own lawn care or whatever I do have my eye on a very very nice piece of equipment and I just was on the phone with the rep for the company that makes it today and he set me up with a whole kind of demo and all that kind of thing and we we're gonna get the right machine ordered and it should be a good time so being that we are just out and about today just kind of getting a couple of things accomplished I have 43 159 miles on the truck. I've already done my first oil change. We went through that on a video and you know everything's been going fairly well I think with the truck so far. So I'm gonna go with just kind of giving you guys my five dislikes. Like if I had to say five things that I didn't like about this truck I'm just gonna lay those out on the table and then we kind of go from there. Some of these I mean obviously They've been mentioned before because anybody who buys a Rebel is going to encounter these exact same things and kind of the wondering why from Chrysler or FCA or whatever. But we're going to start off with number one. Number one is the fact that you can't get a 360 camera because the 360 camera would be awesome, especially when you lift your truck to be able to see that front. And yes, I have bought parts for to do the front camera. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to go just yet because I have to pull the big screen out and then have to find out where the connections are for the auxiliary cameras and go into the taser and then connect that and it's I don't know it's kind of been a bit of a thing trying to figure out where all that's going to go but we will get to that eventually. But with that being said, yes, $60,000 truck, no 360 camera available when it's available on other models. Kind of weird because it wouldn't be that hard to put it in this truck. So, number 1, no 360 camera not a very good decision on Chrysler's behalf to not include that. So let's say that. Number two is it also an option that it doesn't have. Ambient lighting, the ambient lighting that is in the Laramie, where it's kind of on the edges of the dash and it's in the doors, it looks really nice. You're driving at night, you know, it's kind of all nicely lit up a little bit and I'm a big light guy, so that's a big one for me. They have it in the other trucks, they could easily put it in this truck. They didn't put it in this truck and that's my second dislike. Third dislike, the fact that you can't get cooled seats. Well, we all been over that one already. $60,000 truck, no cooled seats, that sucks. Why did FCA not include that? It's beyond me, but yes, that is a big black mark on the Rebel, unfortunately. I mean, I, I do love the truck, but it doesn't have cooled seats and that is just the third thing that I don't like about it. The fourth thing, which really isn't necessarily something directly with the product itself, it's not with the truck itself, but it is a widespread problem that everybody who buys one of these trucks is going to encounter if you've had the same experience as me and from what I've heard, many other people. The Dodge dealer network is a little bit kind of not the greatest. It's, you know, the, the people that work at the Dodge dealership, for the most part, in, a, in my area at least, don't care. Like it's the dealership, I just have to speak on my experience. The dealership that I dealt with, I've said this a million times, I'm not gonna harp on it. They're terrible. The service department is terrible. The sales department, not much better. Not happy with my dealership experience. That's my, my fourth thing. And the reason I mentioned that as one of my four dislikes, because it was part of the buying experience of this truck and the ownership experience. And from what I've heard in the comments, a lot of people aren't happy with their dealerships. So I don't know if FCA has any kind of rain on going in and being like, uh, we, we want to do a survey or something like that on the satisfaction of our customers. Because a lot of times when a salesperson will sell you a vehicle, they'll fire you that survey right away and they'll, they'll give you this whole thing about, oh, if you don't give us a 10 out of 10, then it's really gonna hurt us. And you're ready in the glow buying your new truck. And you end up giving them a good review, even though you don't really have a good chance to really judge whether they did a good job yet because it's not after the sale yet. So I think they should give you a survey a year after you bought your vehicle. And then you can give a real honest opinion of that dealership. And you're not gonna be just like, oh, I wanna help the salesperson out even though they don't deserve it. But we have arrived at the Pew Pew store. I'm gonna go inside to see what they have for what I'm looking for. And then we will get to the number five dislike on the 2019 Ram Rebel. All right, so let's see what time we got here. All right, so that took probably maybe 20 minutes at the most. 
yesterday I went to Walmart because I watched a bunch of YouTube videos that they had really cheap 410 shotguns and 12 gauges and whatnot. Single shot, pretty cheap, not, not very good at all. And I went over to the counter and I waited there for about 15 minutes or so because the guy that was working there was trying to cut a key for a guy and he thought he had lost the key that he was trying to cut or something like that, the original, and you know, we're waiting and waiting and waiting, and eventually a manager had to come over just to show him that, well, you forgot it in the key thing that he was using to cut it. So apparently this guy's got a few screws loose, not entirely sure, but I mean, I don't know. Basically just telling you my experience, my opinion is another thing, but long story short, I, got my fishing license and I was going to see what it would take to buy a gun from Walmart and the guy's like kind of looked at me like with a scared look like oh I've never like kind of like he's never done it before and uh yeah so he's like well it can take over an hour for your background check and you have to do all this paperwork and so it's like why do you even sell guns if you're not gonna have somebody that works at the counter that's willing to actually go through the process of getting the product that you sell to the customer so they can take it home and use it but that is just kind of my experience and I, you know I took one look at this guy after I asked him about the gun and I was like okay never mind I don't want to be here till tomorrow and I just left and then ended up going to a reputable store that is in my area who just checked me out in like 20 minutes you know did the background check did the paperwork they knew all their stuff it was super super easy so if you guys are in the Bowmansville area this is Kerper's gun store and they didn't have any new 410s in stock but they did have a really nice well taken care of used one and the price was really really good I mean this gun he said it was probably from like the 50s or 60s something like that but it looks brand new and I will show it to you guys at the end here it's actually a Stevens brand and I mean, it's a way, way, way better gun than I would have gotten at Walmart for a hundred bucks. So yeah, basically uh, get what you pay for. And I think I got a pretty smoking deal today at 150 bucks for a 410 shotgun that, you know, you can load up. It's not, not a single shot. You can, I don't know how many shells fit in it, but you can just load the tube up and you got some rapid fire action. If you do have, you know, some sort of critter that maybe you missed on the first shot or need a couple extra, you don't have to worry about reloading. You just go after it so it's a bolt action it's kind of cool and I'm uh, very excited to try it out all right so now to our fifth thing that I dislike about the 2019 Ram and if you guys are new to the channel I have had two of these trucks within about a year's time I did have a 2019 Ram Laramie so I do have a little bit of a comparison I could do between the two trucks kind of as this one is approaching the mileage that that truck had when I got rid of it so that truck had 5200 miles on it when I got rid of it and it was doing like 16.5 miles per gallon but it also had the 22s on it and like the more street tires and no lift kit none of that kind of stuff it was bone stock except for the pedal max so this truck now at 4366 is what we're at now it's not quite at the 5200 but i mean we're getting pretty close there you know within uh, about a thousand miles of what that truck was so i think we've kind of settled on our fuel economy at 12.4 which is yeah it's not the greatest definitely not the greatest i hope it will get better with time but but we do have 35 inch tires lift kit and you're gonna get a little bit more drag with all that rotating mass and just that extra weight is gonna be definitely burning a little bit extra fuel. And I put the exhaust on, which doesn't make your fuel economy go down unless you're putting the pedal down more, which is what I always do. So it's just kind of one of those things. I would like to put a cold air intake on the truck. I've got one in the works and I'm just waiting for it to be released. And then we can get that in the truck and hopefully that's gonna give us a little bit of an increase. But as it stands right now, 12.4 miles per gallon is kind of what is to be expected with this setup on this truck. And that would be my fifth dislike, the fact that I was running to the pump. And also I would recommend getting the bigger fuel tank. This truck did not have it, but it was on the lot already. I didn't order it. And yeah, so I ended up with the smaller tank, which means I go to the fuel station quite often. And it's just kind of the way it is. And that's my fifth dislike for the 2019 Ram. But for all of you guys out there who were unsatisfied with my list possibly, because there's always those people in the comments that are saying, oh, I can't believe it, this is not, those aren't enough reasons. But I gotta throw a couple out there just 
me personally, things that I think that they could have improved on, just if I had any wish to be granted basically by FCA that they can make a truck that would be more tailored towards what I would really be excited to drive. I mean, I love this truck, but if I could choose, I probably would choose a couple of other extra things that I think would be possible for them to do. One being red seats. I love red interiors. And I mean, there's probably people out there that hate them. I love them. If you could get a full red seat in this truck, it would be absolutely awesome. And I definitely would put that on my wish list. You can't get them with the red on the back, but I don't really like that. I, I, the black in the front and the red in the back is kind of weird to me. I mean, I guess it looks good, but it's, I don't know. If you're gonna go red, might as well go all the way. Get the full red seat. Also, it would be cool if they did have some sort of maybe a limited slip front diff so you'd have like almost like a front rear kind of locker setup because I mean we do have the rear electric locker but we still only have one wheel drive in the front so like the tremor that Ford had put out I mean obviously if Ford can do it Ram could do it too I'd put a maybe some sort of limited slip front diff because this is more of an off-roady truck kind of just separate it from the other trucks a little bit more rather than just like the bumpers and the few little nuances that they do with the tire package just to make this more of the off-road sporty truck. Maybe you could give us just a little bit more goodies to separate us from the Laramies, and the Longhorns, the Limiteds, all that kind of stuff. So there it is everybody. Hopefully the TRX is gonna kind of give us some of the things from our wish list. Hopefully, hopefully they've listened to all the videos that everybody's made that basically are complaining about the same things that I have. Definitely drop in the comments. If you guys have any concerns, dislikes or anything with your trucks that I didn't get on my list definitely drop those in the comments as well and if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button and as always keep that hammer down and for those of you who stuck around till the end of the video let's check out the new toy here it is and for a 410 this thing definitely has some weight to it it is not the light gun I would have expected it to be, but this is a good old classic. As you guys can see, there's like no nicks or anything on this thing. This thing looks like brand new. It doesn't look like it's ever been abused or dropped or anything like that. And some of these old guns are definitely made with some quality that you don't see anymore. So what do you guys think? 150 bucks, did they get a good deal? I think it's gonna be pretty awesome can't wait to shoot it so funny story i was just kind of finished filming here for the day so i had to go for a little cruise in the woods with the old mud mouse ford and we have dalton on his way over because well i found a big hole and got the truck high center so i was neutral dropping it smashing gears reverse drive everything trying to dig myself out and well as most people would know if you have your truck high centered it's pretty tough to get out unless you have another truck to pull you out it's another day in Pennsylvania. Yep, every other day. So I bought a gun, I drove my truck, and then I got another truck stuck in the woods. Yep. So it's definitely a good day. Wife said I can go around the yard and do whatever I want as long as I don't lift anything. So I don't think she said anything about mudding. We're good to go. So the biggest problem with this truck is, well, we have no brakes, but I'm not really that concerned about that. Full sin. Absolutely. A little bit of redneck pen scraping on our way. All right, so Ford is over there. I think I could probably just back up to it. So I think we should be close enough with the strap. Let's get her hooked up. All right, hold up, bring her back. So, that's how that's done. Two Fords definitely are better than one. Especially, we end up in a hole like that one. That's all you gotta do, don't matter. We are not worried about these trucks. Every time we hit something with these, they get more and more character into them. So, I mean, it's just a good time all 
had by all. Dalton's gonna leave his mark on the old mouse. Right. He's going for a soft spot. I did customize the trim here a little bit on my adventure through the bush, but it's all good. Where should we kick? Wherever you want. It's a pristine panel right, right there. there first, and these are Don't hurt yourself. Oh. <laughs> Can't hurt it. A little bit of rust, but you know. Built for tough. Right exactly. There. Can't break them. Nope. I think this thing. Fell apart right there. Well, you never know. A Toyota for sure. <laughs> But all in all, I think she's really coming along. The restoration has been uh, quite a process, but starting to get there, I think. It's getting there. 